That was the Bang at Cloud Theater. Fun stuff, huh? More than fun. Absolutely fantastic story to see people with that kind of talent in our community. Absolutely. I mean, their shows are gripping. It is something to definitely take in. But that's not all we got today. We continue on our quest as we go out to the Akron Art Museum and meet Pedro Mayer. Pedro Mayer, a name you will never forget when you see this. If you can just tell us a little bit specifically about this exhibition, Heresies. Yes. What does it mean? This exhibition started out six years ago. Okay. Um, and it's now in 65 museums wow. simultaneously. Okay. Together with this one, all around the world. Excellent. So you have each one of these exhibitions actually being very different. Mm -hmm. This one was curated by the people in this museum. Mm -hmm. And in the, in the same way, other museums, for example, the National Art Museum of China, mm -hmm. which is the most important museum in Beijing, like oh, the right. Metropolitan, they chose a completely different set of images. Really? So it's not the same in Spain or in Italy or in Mexico or in Brazil or in uh, Singapore or in China or in Pakistan okay. where it was also or in India. What's the size of the body of work then as a whole? I mean, how many pieces are there that they, they can select from? Uh, they could select from about 3,000 images. Wow. And it all is under the theme of heresies? Yes. Wow, very cool. Um, as we were reading, you choose to manipulate your photos using digital processes. Uh, what, what made you kind of make that leap from sort of your more traditional photography using the film uh, so that you would kind of transcend just the traditional style, I guess? Well, I am by nature very lazy. <laughs> All right. So any time that you have a process which offers to make things easier mm -hmm. and faster, I'm for it. Excellent. What's the camera you're using now? What's the, what's the camera of choice today? Well, this is a Canon camera, mm -hmm. uh, which I wrote about 20 years ago mm -hmm. that this would eventually happen. And it's at the same time a video camera, high definition video camera, okay. and a high definition still camera. Wow. So I can take both at the same time. Okay. And this enables me to be able to make video mm -hmm. with sound. Mm -hmm. And right now... You're, you're recording us right now? I'm recording you. Excellent. <laughs> uh, I was reading in your bio about how you were born in Spain. Yes. Uh, being of German and Jewish heritage yes. and kind of your family fleeing the Nazi regime, how did that s sort of shape who you are today or the nature of your art? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I suppose it does. Yeah? In yeah. what ways? Well, um, in what ways? I would say in what ways not, in okay. every way. All right. In every way, the way I think, the way I like, what I prefer, mm -hmm. uh, the, the world which surrounded me as a kid, mm -hmm. um, I think became very a strong influence okay. on my work. When um, a, a visitor leaves your exhibition, what's the message that you hope they're able to take home from that? You see, the implications are that this exhibition here I put together. Oh, okay, right. So you would have to address that question to the curator. We'll have to talk to them. What it is that they want to convey. <laughs> okay. Because I didn't put this exhibition together. Okay. Nor any one of the other 65 exhibitions. Okay. And that I think is the interesting thing is what did each one of these curators have in mind sure. to show and to present? I had one curator uh, wonder whether it was a wise decision on my part to let it so open, mm -hmm. to allow everybody to define me. Mm -hmm. And my question to, the, my answer to that question was, 
uh, actually no one, not one place is going to define me. Sure, it's the body. Yes. So you have a book, mm -hmm. and that book is yet again different. It's not even the catalog of the exhibition, because which exhibition? Right. Being that they're all different. Sure. So you have a book which has its own logic to it, let's okay. say. And that book, when you go through it, uh, conveys a certain sense of irony, mm -hmm. a certain sense of humor, a certain sense of um, looking at life, which is very different to the nature of this exhibition. Okay. So that's why I say that the curator who put together this made their own curatorial choices. Sure. And that, I think, is what's so exciting and interesting about this. That's how somebody can make a statement about me, mm -hmm. which is very different from that which somebody else made. You're all over the world. Uh, how did you make the decision to show here in Akron as well? Again, it's not my decision. We offered it to you. Okay. And you decided in <laughs> Akron. We wanted it. Yes, you wanted it. You wanted to participate. Mm -hmm. And you had the... I, I think it uh, speaks very highly of the curatorial board and there were the people who made the decision in Akron that they were open to this project. Sure. Because n I can tell you, n not every museum had the um, willingness to participate because they were... Uh, unsure about themselves in respect to the, these issues. Sure, okay. And they didn't want to let go so easily. They didn't want to explore the issues. Right, excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us today. It's my pleasure, and I really appreciate the opportunity of being here with you. Excellent, and if people want to find out more about you, they can go to your website, that's pedromayer.com. Yes, pedromayer.com. Okay. And there, the book mm -hmm. has a page on the internet with all the pictures in the book with an audio track. Oh, wow. Which explains the, the images <laughs> in the book. That is very cool. Wow. I mean, that's some deep stuff there, right? I'll tell you what, I like the guy. He is, like I said, he is such a nice person to be with. So open, willing to have a conversation with you. It's funny that he was videotaping us while we were videotaping him. How many times, <laughs> got to ask you on this next show, yeah. how many times you've been driving along and you say to yourself, I wish I played some musical instrument? Well, mm -hmm. that dream can come true. Yeah, and actually what's neat about this next story is we find out what's the right age for taking up music? Any age. Yeah. That's the story with New Horizons Band. Let's go see him. Talking with Jim Stahl, you are the creator locally of the New Horizons Band and the sponsor. What's this about? This is an opportunity to get uh, older adults who have always wanted to play a musical instrument and provide them with an opportunity to learn and to play and to perform. Jim Adkins, this New Horizons Band is, is your baby at this point. Tell us about it. <laughs> um, well, it's grown into a, more than a baby or an infant or an adolescent. Actually, it's become a, an adult monster. It started out with six people, and uh, Jim Stahl's idea to bring this opportunity to our area. And uh, it was opportune because he came to me at a jazz festival and said, hey, you're going to retire, aren't you?